Let me tell you why you're here. You're here because you know something. What you know you can't explain. But you feel it. That there's something wrong. You don't know what it is, but it's there. Like a splinter in your mind. Driving you mad. Do you want to know what it is? you were born into bondage, born into a prison that you cannot smell or taste or touch. A prison for your mind. Unfortunately, no one can be told. You have to see it for yourself. This is your last chance. After this, there is no turning back. You take the blue pill. The story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want. You take the red pill. You stay in Wonderland. And I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. I have been praying in the Spirit for a few months now after being baptized in the Holy Spirit um, and it took me about seven years to receive the evidence of speaking in tongues but I did it um, I was I locked myself in the bathroom and I sat down on the floor to have complete privacy it was like the middle of the night it was about midnight and my husband and my four kids were off sleeping and I began reading about um, what scripture says about speaking in tongues and when I got to the bottom of this website that I was reading it said that you can't speak two languages at once and so I bowed my head and I instead of saying like Abba Father or Daddy or thank you or something like that in English I decided just to give utterance and I spoke in a language <laughs> I never heard before so you can each day balabasito And shalom and welcome everyone to the house of the lost sheep of Israel. And um, today we have an interesting teaching today. Because we're going to go through some things. We're going to find out a few things today that actually are um, going to show you how the Bible actually tells you about what is what and one of the main things is is people love to tell you preachers and teachers alike they love to tell you 
certain things. Just want to adjust this mic real quick. And one of the things is what they love to tell you is this. That once you receive the Holy Ghost, as the Bible says, you're going to do what you just seen. You're going to speak in these these other says whatever they doing this babble so we need to find out what is <clears throat> specifically what is the the holy ghost but it's rules that go with that and the bible depicts that also the bible says we must repent <clears throat> excuse me and be baptized then you can receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And you'll see the evidence of that by speaking in tongues. Is that what that is, what they was doing? So today we have to see exactly, exactly what the Holy Ghost is according to Scripture. Not according to what people say, but what the Bible say. So it's three tools you need according to scripture. As he said, as we see, <clears throat> and as I just spoken, these three things that you need to get into the kingdom, you need to do those three things. And we know, again, you have to repent, so we need to know what that means. You have to be baptized. We have to know what that means. And you can receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. We need to know exactly what that means. The beautiful part about this as, as we get ready to move forward <clears throat> is that many people that has taught it so many different ways, it'd be hard for them to change it now. Based on what this Holy Ghost says, it'd be hard for them to change it because you can be able to go back into their documentation in their speeches and in different things to where you can catch what was said. This is the beautiful part. So let's look at something. We're going to find out a few things. See, because Yahweh Shai said the same thing. We're going to look at <clears throat> John chapter 5, and we're going to look at <clears throat> verse 43. John chapter 5, and we're going to go to verse 43. And we need to see what that says. Because some people miss some things. Yahweh says, I come in my Father's name. And you receive me not. If another shall come in his own name. Him. Ye shall receive. Him. Ye will receive. The point is this. If another come into you. With new world ministries or. Whatever name they, they, they have, they name Johnny Ministries. They come in these different names. And they'll tell you to come here where they have this such and such ministries. And you accept those. But his form of baptism is his form of baptism. His form of repentance is his form of repentance. His form of receiving the Holy Ghost is his form of receiving the Holy Ghost. Just as Yahweh said, when he started his ministry, and why he even said that what he had was not his. So he said the same thing at his beginning of his ministry. Let's look at this. And, and we're going to look over here in Matthew chapter 4, verse 17. We're going to see this over here. And he's telling you specifically what you have to do here. He says, from the time, from that time, Yahweh began to preach. He began to preach. 
And he said something that was really, really good that we need to clearly get. He said, repent. First thing coming out of his mouth, repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Yeah, how shall I begin his ministry? And the first thing come out is repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. We need to know what repent is. Because that's one of the steps on getting into the kingdom. We need to know that step to get into the kingdom. Malachi chapter 3 and verse 16 enlightens us a little bit and we're going to start digging into it and we'll see this here. It says, Then they that feared the Spirit of God spake often one to another and the Spirit of God hearkened and heard it and a book of remembrance. Interesting, isn't it? A book of remembrance was written before him. Before him, for them, for them that feared the spirit of God and that thought upon his name. You see what's going on here. You see what's happening here. See, many people and many of us are proud calling our personal doctrines, our own wickedness, happiness, tempting God. However, for them that truly desire him would think upon his name, salvation in saving us from what? That's the question. Cause we got to repent. So we need to find out what's going on in this book of remembrance and we can see a comparison let's look at something we need to see some things to understand what we're doing we're going to go to Romans chapter 15 and pick it up at um at verse 4 and it says this with the book of remembrance that we did so he said he right here he's telling you clearly the book of remembrance for whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning through patience and comfort of scripture might have hope. We understand we need to remember something because it's in the book of remembrance and it's for our learning. It's for our learning. And this is the thing which we starting to find out that we're going to start undercovering and removing layers and layers and layers to understand what is happening. Because repent, repent on what he was saying. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. We got to know exactly what that word right there means. In that word, as we taught and we show you many different things, that mean remember. That mean remember. And we're going to see the same thing on, that's why he's saying repent. So we got to look at the functions of this. We want to look at the functions, how things work, how this works out in scripture. So people are going to tell you many different things, but the only way we can truly find out what is true when we deal just with Bible and not going outside Bible. But let's look at this. Let's look at how this works with repent where we're saying it's remember. We're going to go to Numbers chapter 15. We're going to pick it up at 37. We're going to go down to 37 and we're going to find some interesting things here. It says this. It says in 
the spirit of God spake unto Moses saying, what did he say? We getting ready to find out. We getting ready to find out. He said, speak unto the children of Israel, bid them that they make them fringes in the border of their garments. Make it in them. This is the problem that people do have because we will uh, put them on them. But he says it should be in them. Make them fringes in the border of their garments throughout their generations and that they put upon the fringes of the borders a ribbon of blue. But he says something interesting. Watch this in verse 39. Verse 39, he, he, he clears something up. He says, and it shall be unto you for a fringe that ye may look upon it and remember. You see here, to remember. Do the book of remember, to remember, to repent. All the commandments of the spirit of God and do them. And that ye seek not after your own heart in your own eyes after which ye used to go a whoring. How people have their own ministries, do their own things. This is, this is what we do. We're finding out what's, what's happening here, but we got to still dig more. Cause we go, we're going to pound this to where we clearly get what repent, what repent mean. And to look at this and let's look at something. Let's look at where they, they people fear. And I'm telling you, preachers fear to speak on God repenting. They fear him on that. Why? Because they don't know what they don't know what repent mean. So they'll say he did everything but repent. They, well, it don't, that don't really mean what he's saying there because no, they're scared to say what it is because they don't know. But we're going to look at Genesis chapter 6 and pick it up in verse 5. It says, And God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and every imagination of the thought of his heart was only evil continually. Continually. Interesting, isn't it? Because what follows this is the interesting part. It says, and it repented the Lord. It repented the Lord. They, they, they say it says everything else, but what it says right here, what you see in scripture on paper. And in this case, on these digital books on what it's saying. And it's saying clearly repented. It repented the Lord. And it's telling you, it reminded the Lord in this grief is not made him feel sorry because we're going to see as it goes on, you're going to see what he's going to say. And you're going to see he's not talking about sorry. It said, and it grieved him, it angered him to his heart. So it reminded the spirit of God that he had made man. It reminded him. And then he did something. He did something. Let's see what he said he's going to do about this. And the spirit of God said what? <clears throat> he said, I will destroy man. Letting you know it angered him. I will destroy man. That don't mean I felt sorry for you. I'm going to destroy man. The same as when you get angry and you are working with something, you get angry, you tear it up. Same thing. He said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of this earth. That sounds like that's anger. That's not, that don't sound like he feeling sorry. He said, both man, beasts, and creeping things, and fowls of the air, for it reminded me, it repented me, it reminded me that I had made them. That's all it was saying. But once we understand what things is, and to show you that he reminded him, watch this. Because he, he's telling you right up front what he did. So let's look at this. And just to make sure we'll recap that, don't what he said. We're going to go to Genesis chapter 1. We're going to pick it up at 1, Genesis 1, 27. And you see right here, that's why he said what he said. He said, so God created man in his own image. In the image 
of God created he him, male and female created he them. So he telling you right up front, this is why it angered him. So you see what he's saying, what he's going to do, but you see what he did here in Genesis 1, 1 He created man in his own image. So the spirit of God said he's going to destroy that because they were doing wickedness. Wickedness. Let's go a little bit deeper on this. Let's look a little bit deeper on this. We're going to go over here to Exodus. We're going to look at Exodus. <clears throat> We're going to go down to verse 30, chapter 32 and pick it up at uh, verse 7. We're going to have to move around on this one pretty good to where we can really get what's going on because we're going to find out something that happened <clears throat> and we're going to start at verse 7 we're going to see something that happened and the spirit of God said unto Moses go get down get thee down for thy people which thou broughtest out of the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves so we have to remember this <clears throat> excuse me why because he brought us out of bondage and this is what we did. And you're going to find out what we did right through here, which is stupid within itself on what we did. Brought us out of bondage. And the first thing we do is look upon idols. That's the first thing we did. And even looking at someone as me, I am not the one. Or don't you ever put in your own personal mind that it was me that brought you out of bondage. Out of not knowing what the truth is. See, you have many preachers and teachers who never even say that. But that has nothing to do with me. He's only using this vessel to speak to his people. That has nothing to do with me he's doing his business through me a body that is sac that is sacrificed unto him do that have anything to do with me <clears throat> no I've just provided the body so don't ever <clears throat> excuse me say that it was me personally the one that brought you out of false doctrine. It was me that brought you out of this wilderness because it's not me. I have nothing to do with that. And that's part of the problem that many of us have based even on this, what we're going through. In verse eight, it says this, <clears throat> that they have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them that have made them a molten calf. They needed something to where they wanted to look upon. They made something they wanted to look upon. Now, how much sense that don't make? He take them out of, out of captivity and they make a molten calf. Why people look upon people. They look upon a man as salvation. All a man can do and all even I can do is guide you to where the truth is. I can't save you. Only the spirit of God can. I can't do anything. That's why the spirit of God told Moses the people have corrupted themselves after the spirit of God brought them out and, and worshiped the molten calf and have worshiped it and, sanct and sacrificed there unto and, and said this is what really gets him angry these be thy gods O Israel which have brought us up out of the land of Egypt You don't think that'll uh, get him upset? He didn't did all this and you put credit on something else. Same as we do people. 
we sit there and people can come to me and sit there and say, man, you, you brought me out of bondage. No, I didn't. I didn't do anything. I didn't do any of that. This is the problem. Because now you're trying to make me out of that molten calf. Many people got molten calves in their lives. Many people got a molten calf in their life. But he goes on more. Because this, this angers him. That's why he's saying you, you need to repent. Watch this. Verse 9. And he says this. And he makes this pretty, pretty, pretty straightforward here. Spirit of God said unto Moses, I have seen this people. He has seen this people. And behold, and we know behold means remember. So you need to remember and remember it is a stiff necked people. It is a stiff necked people. Let's look at something. I, I want to show you something. I want to show you something real quick, real quick. We're going to go to Zechariah. Let's go to Zechariah. We're going to see something. <clears throat> we want to see something there in chapter 11. And we're going to look over here at verse 9. In verse 9, it says this. Then said I, who is spirit of God, I will not feed you. That that die, let it die. See, we, we went through this last week. We went through this last week. When you're a stiff neck, it's no reason for him to feed a stiff neck. Treat a stiff neck as a stiff neck. And he says, and that that is cut off, let it be cut off. He don't want to deal with it. And let the rest eat of every one's flesh of another. And as I said, it takes you, it, 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 it's so bluntly here on why he's telling you over there in Exodus. And he says this in verse 10. Why we recapping even some of this from last week. And it said, and I took my staff and even beauty and cut it asunder. He cut it out of you. Why? Because he won to break his covenant with you. Let's look at it. He said in his beauty and cut it asunder that I might break my covenant, which I have made with all the people. Just to prove the point, <clears throat> he want to cut it out of you. Just to prove the point, just to prove the point, what he's talking about. And this is why people we're going to go to Jeremiah chapter 31. We're going to look at 31. And he tells you, and he, he's right up front. And you'll see when you can blend everything together. It says, remember, it goes right back to remember. This is why we need to be repentant. Remember, remember what? The days come, said the Spirit of God, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. And what he's going to do. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them out of, brought them by, took them by the hand and brought them out of the, the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break. Although I was a husband unto them, said the Spirit of God. But this is what he said he was going to do. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with them, the house of Israel. After those days, said the Spirit of God. I will put my law, I will put my law in their inward parts that he's talking about over here. He's going to cut out and write it upon their hearts, which that's what he's talking about. He's going to cut out and I will be their God and they should be my people. But if you're stiff neck, that's what he want to cut out of you. Very, you can see it's very simple, very straightforward on what he's saying he's going to do. <clears throat> You want to cut that? His beauty is his law. His staff is his rod where he corrects us. But the main thing you missing 
is what his beauty is and you don't want to do it, he going to cut it out of you. Let you die. Very upfront about what he's doing. Very upfront about what he's doing. But he says this. As he's talking to Moses, not talking to anyone else, but he spoke to Moses. So he says, he says this to Moses. Now, for that reason, now, therefore, for that reason alone, leave me alone. Just tell him, leave me alone. That my wrath may wax hot against them. Who? Those stiff necked people who he's going to cut that word out of them. That I may consume them. That I may consume them. Don't you ever think your poop don't stink. Don't you ever think that you God gift to him. That you just so perfect. You just so beautiful. You just so whatever you want to think you are. He just got to have you. Because he told Moses. I take them out. And will make thee a great nation. I will make thee a great nation. See, the spirit of God. No, we're hard neck, stiff neck, hard headed people and brought us forth out of bondage. Now, the main thing is this. People are scared to say certain things about what's going on about this situation. Now, did he know this? Did God know that we was a stiff neck people? Let's look at it. <laughs> Let's look at it. We're going we're gonna to look at some things. We're going to look at a couple of things. We're going to go to Deuteronomy chapter 5 and pick it up at verse 7. And just look at a couple of things. And it says, Thou shalt not have no other gods before me. No other gods before me. And we did. Wait a minute. Thou shalt make no any grieving image or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the waters beneath the earth. Guess what? And we did. See, it don't matter what we do, we do it. No matter what we do, we did it. I can care less what it was. We, we, we did it. So you can't say we ain't stiff neck because we did it. But he gets, he gets on better. Watch this. That thou, that thou shall not bow thyself down. Thou shall not bow down thyself unto them, nor serve them for the spirit of God, thy, for the spirit of thy God am a jealous God. But we don't we don't care. See, I'm not gonna sit there and say, oh, we all can no. Oh. We say we do with our lips, but we prove it through what we're doing. But the main thing he said, visiting the the acts of sin, the iniquity upon of, of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Because when you do those things, he only see you hate him. He's clear. It's clear about what he's saying. See, and people think he's going to sugarcoat what he's saying. And God don't sugarcoat nothing. People want to woo you into coming to him. And he's very upfront. The prize is big. Eternity is big. So why you got to sit there and sweet talk you? And it's common sense right here. Let's watch this. This is this is the problem that most people are going to fall out on. We go through this every time. It says, in showing mercy unto thousands. You see right there, it don't say millions. It don't say billions. Everybody is not going to make it. 
Why? Because we are stiff necked people. We're going to find some kind of way to justify ourselves. We're going to try to find some kind of way to justify ourselves. Think about it. And he said, I'm only showing love to thousands in every generation. Same thing. You, you got people sitting out there. They talking about 144,000 only going into heaven. Then everybody go. They're going to be ruled. See, that, that shows you again, people not understanding scripture, because that's why he's talking about in every generation. So every generation, he's pulling out 144,000. Every generation. Better make sure you get your spot. You better make your election sure. But you can justify as much as you want. That's why a lot of people have a problem. Most people have a problem when they come here. See, because they want you to chase them when they disappear. Oh, you know, yeah, I'm going to make him call me. Okay. Believe me, you're not going to get that phone call. Believe me, you're not going to get that phone call. That's 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 other doctrine in people, personal ministries. But he's telling you right up here what happened. So we know we are a stiff necked people and we know he only got love for thousands, not millions per generation. So we look at this and. Go back here and look at, let's look at Moses again. We're going to see what's going on. We're going to see what's happening. So he says this with them. And Moses besought the spirit of his God and said, Lord, why do thou wax hot against thy people, which thou hast brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? See, these are the things that we should make sure we understand. These are the things we got to make sure we clearly get on everything. So as he's saying this, we, we look at verse 12 and we go down. Watch what, watch what happens. See, because there's something on what we did and what he's upset about. He says, wherefore, wherefore, here go the crazy part. Should the Egyptians speak and say for mischief, for mischief, did he bring them out and slay them in the mountains and consume them from the face of, from the face of the earth? Moses Moses talking face to face with God talking face to face with God so he's saying one thing he says and did bring him out and slay him in the mountain consume him from the face of the earth turn from thy fierce wrath and repent Moses A full-blooded flesh man telling the Spirit of God to repent. So we know it can't mean what people say what it means. Because he's just telling God to do one thing. Which shows you again how people lie. He said, and repent of this evil against thy people. Why is he saying that? I'm going to show you why. I'm going to show you something. I want to I show you something. We're we going to look at this. We're going to look at Exodus chapter 32. And we're going to go down to 32. And we want to look at this all together. It says... And this is Moses still talking. He said, yet now, if thou will forgive their sins. Moses. This is something 
nobody would do. Moses, but Moses got that kind of heart. Forgive their sins. And if not, he's putting an ultimatum here. Who? Moses. That shows you the heart of Moses. And you're going to see why Moses is doing what he's doing. He says, blot me. Then take me out. But don't do this. Don't do this to them because they don't think you did it for mischief. But blot me out. I pray thee out of the book which thou hast written. And the spirit of God said, said this unto Moses, whosoever have sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. It's him, the one I'm going to do. Me and you are good, Moses. But the one who do this, I'm going to do him. Why well, I'm going to let him in and he's the one being shady and I'm going to take you out. So Moses told him to repent. Moses, hey, man, man, come on, God, you got to repent. But watch why it says remember. You want to see why it says remember and he's going to say this. He says over here and repent in verse 12, but watch 13. Watch what he says here. Watch what he says here. He says, remember, that's why he says repent. Remember I, Abraham, Isaac, and Israel? You remember them? And he specific, he didn't say Jacob, but he put Israel because he had changed his name. You remember them? Thy servants? Remember, remember, repent, remember to whom thou swear by thy own self and said to them, it's not Moses laying some stuff back on the spirit to just let him, hey, we gotta, hey, check this out. You gotta remember this. I will multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven in this land that I have spoken, I will give unto your seed and they should inherit it. Let's just check. See, Moses is laying some stuff down on him. That's why I sit there. People be talking about, oh man, Moses this, Moses that. I'm like Moses. All right, all right. We're going to go to Genesis chapter 26, picking up at verse 4. This is what Moses was laying on him. Because the Spirit of God said, I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven. I will give unto thy seed all these countries, and in thy seed shall all nations, shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. <clears throat> this is what Moses repeated to him. He's, hey, we took them out and we do this, and you do this, this they're going to think you did it for mischief. They don't think he clearly did it for mischief. So what happened? So what happened? And the Lord remembered of the evil which he thought to do unto those unto his people. He remembered. Because he was going to take them out. Why? Because he, he, hey, get out because I'm going to take them out. I'm going to take them out. But we got to see how this repent <clears throat> works. And we're going to look at some things where you're going to see some of the biggest misconceptions on how repent is. We're going to look at one here. One of the biggest really error taught scriptures in the Bible. And normally you don't speak about it, but we got to speak about it because we got to, we got to straighten all this stuff out. We got to straighten out a lot of stuff. And we're going to look at Psalms chapter 10. We're going to pick it up at verse four. In one of the most biggest error taught scriptures in the Bible. If not the biggest. It says this. It says this. In verse 4, it says, The Spirit of God has sworn and not and will not repent. One of the biggest mistakes people don't understand David and clearly don't understand God because it says something else that's right here it says thou art a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek 
The Spirit of God has sworn that he will not remember flesh, period, is what he's actually saying. People thinking he's saying that we are priests forever. That's what people teach. That's the stupidity on, on, on ignorance. Because that's not what he's saying. He said he has sworn he would not remember <clears throat> that thou art priest forever. <clears throat> Meaning we ain't priest forever. Flesh, you are not a priest forever. Period. That's what he's saying. And we're going to see that. And we're going to show you right in scripture to where you'll see it. I just, the reason I'm taking it, because I want you to see what he's saying. Watch what he says here. It says, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. So he's saying this, but what is a priest? One, we're going to see what that we're going to see what that actually is. Cuz a priest is an intercessor. It's one who serves as intermediary between people and God forever. That's what that's what that is. A priest, and you got to be an intermediary forever. And that's something we are not that's something we're not, but we're going to find out more as we, we find this piece out. It says, watch this. Watch what it says here. Because we are not going to be priests forever. It says, the Lord at thy right hand shall strike down, shall strike the kings in the day of his wrath. So we're not going to be priests forever. Not in flesh. Not in flesh. That's crazy. That's craziness. So the Lord is our creator and he's going to strike down kings in the day of his wrath. So what they do, people will run here and they're going to go right here and we're going to go right there to it. We're going to go right to Hebrews and they people say, oh no, they got this wrong. They got that. No, we could, we getting ready to straighten everything out. What I just said, just on that statement alone. So on first 17, it says you, in Hebrews chapter 7, verse 17, we'll do the different colors to make sure we get it. It says, He test he for he testified, thou art priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. I want you to clearly get that. I want you to clearly get that. Keep this in your head. Keep that in your head because that's what people truly try to believe. That's what people try to be, they just hold right there. We're prefect. No, no, no. That's not what he's saying. He's going to tell you what happened. Let's get, let's get to the heartbroken one. It says, for there is verily a disnulling of the commandment going for the weakness. A disnulling. Here's the problem. Most of them don't know why you're even saying that. Disnulling means the cancellation. <laughs> For there is rarely a disnulling. It's a cancellation. Something that's making void. The commandment. Why? Other commandment going before for the weakness of the unprofitableness thereof. The flesh profits nothing. So why would the spirit of God make flesh priest forever seeing what we do? He's going to clear all this. <laughs> He's going to clear all this up right here. Watch this. For the law. Actually, let me, let me highlight it. We'll, we'll highlight it. <clears throat> For the law made nothing perfect. How do we know? Famous place. First Timothy. First Timothy chapter one. Gonna pick it up at verse nine. It says, "Knowing that the law was not made for a righteous man." It's telling you over here too. For the law made nothing perfect, but bringing it into a better hope, by which he drew nigh unto God. I want you to understand what he's saying. So nothing was made perfect, not for flesh. So watch this on what he does in verse 20. And in as much as not without an oath, he was made priest. 
Without an oath, he was made priest. Without an oath, he was made priest. We want to understand this. So you have so much in comparing the oath. You have these people going in these churches and being made priests without an oath from God, according to flesh. I want you to think about that. Verse 20 says this. Verse 21 it says this. For those priests were made without an oath. That's actually what I, what I was just saying. They was made priests without an oath. God didn't say nothing about you are going to be a priest forever in flesh. Because then he'd be contradicting himself. But they'll sit there and say, well, we're made priests by the order of Melchizedek. No, you know you didn't. You lied. Stop lying. Stop lying on the Bible. Stop lying on the Bible. He says, but this, but this, because you see it's change, it changes from here. But this, with the oath by him said unto him that thou, that the spirit of, that, that the creator swore and will not remember thou art priest forever in the order by Melchizedek. Do you understand what he's saying? The Lord swear he would not remember priest according to the flesh forever. This is what he's telling you right up front. And I remember flesh is priest forever. All flesh will die. Actually, just just I just want you to keep something in mind. Just keep this in mind as we go, as we finish that part out. Just keep this in mind. I want you to just keep this in mind as we can as we go forward. In Genesis chapter six, verse seventeen. Just keep this in mind. It says right here, and remember, I, even I, do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh. Wherein that 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 uh, where is wherein is the breath of life from under heaven, and everything that is in the earth shall die. You ain't a priest forever, but you having people teaching that that they're priests forever. So I just want you to keep that in mind as we moving forward. So he's saying what he's saying to where we can get what he's talking about. Watch this. Because we ain't priests forever. Flesh will never be priests forever. Get, get that, throw that out your mind. But watch what he says here. Because he's saying after order of Melchizedek, but watch this. By so much was, and this is why people really don't understand why I said it's so important to understand the functioning of words on what, the, what he uses. Because the functioning even of the names is most important in the Bible. Why? Because he says, by so much was, it says right here, Yahweh Shai. But if you just flip that, by was salvation. That's what all it was. So much was salvation made surely, surety, a better testament. Surety. Surety. Salvation. Let, let's just prove the point. We're just going to prove the points. We're going to go to Isaiah and show you why salvation was made a better, a better one. We got, we want to see these and we want to look at those in, in its entirety. So in Isaiah chapter 12, we're going to pick it up at verse two. Again, <laughs> remember you keep going back to he he has this theme throughout the Bible. You, you don't remember something. Remember, God is God is my salvation. That's clear. Absolute. Clear. God is. I will trust and not be afraid. Because God is that, that he is. But watch what he says here. For the spirit of 
Yehovah, the spirit of Christ, is all they're saying. But people think that's God, God. I don't get it. Showing you again the inconsistencies that people teach. But it's saying, Christ is my strength in my song. He also is become, not is, he become my salvation. By so much salvation made a surety for a better testament. Telling you the same thing. Actually, let's look at let's look at a little bit. Let's listen. People say, well, that's all Old Testament. Okay, that's fine. Let's let's look at something. Let's look at something. When you can look upon salvation. Luke chapter two, and we're gonna pick it up at verse twenty nine. Why? Because we need to see something there. We got this guy Simon who went into the temple, but he was full of the Holy Ghost, and he went in the temple and Yahweh was there as a baby, and the parents brought him in and once he came in, he put the child in his arms. And he said this to the Lord. He said this. Watch this. He said, Lord, now let thou servant, let thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. Nah, I, I can roll. You can take me now, Lord. He said, for my eyes have seen thy salvation. He's seen thy salvation. He's seen this child, Yahweh. He's seen this child. So he's cool now. So we have to understand that. So salvation was made a better testament, which is the word of Christ. But we got to see something. Let's look at verse 23. It says, and they truly were many priests. It's many priests. And they truly were many priests. You can count priests on tons and tons and tons and tons. I was, I would even go on to say there was a millions and millions and millions of priests. Because telling you right up front, telling you right up front, because they we're not suffered to continue by reason of death. How are you gonna how are you gonna continue as a priest and you're dead? Only one salvation can be a priest forever. Actually, let's look at it. Let's look at it. Only one can be a priest forever. In uh C E C only one but you have a lot of people who sit there and they'll tell you all kind of crazy stupid ignorant things and we're going to look at this in uh, Zechariah chapter 3 picking up at verse 8 and he penned this it says here now O Joshua O Yahweh O salvation same thing the high priest Christ thou and thy fellows that sat before thee for they are men, men, flesh. <laughs> we done sat there and we trying to put, we trying to put ourselves before Christ. So men, we wonder at because we're men, but he says this, we wonder at, but he says what? Again, remember, we, we need to piece it down. He, he said, he's telling you, clear as day here. Remember, I will bring forth my servant. Who? Christ. Who? The branch. He's the priest forever. He's the priest forever. You better remember that. Don't you let no man fool you on this lie. But it's better yet. This, 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 this. We ain't done yet. We ain't done yet. We ain't done yet. We want to get down to verse 28. Let's go down here to verse 28. It says, For the law maketh men high priests, which have infirmities. So most of us don't know what infirmities actually is. 
but we want to find out what it is. And infirmity is just to show you, to tell you what it actually means. It means one who have the lies and deceit. The law, what men do. Are made priests. But the word of the oath, which was since the law, maketh the son who is consecrated forevermore. The servant who is consecrated forevermore. The servant is that branch over there who is Christ. He's clear. He's clear. So he says this and he makes sure some things are clear here. We're going to look at Ezekiel. We're going to pick it up at first chapter 14. Ezekiel chapter 14, we're going to look at something in verse 6. And it says, For that reason, for that reason, saith the house, saith unto the house of Israel, thus saith the Spirit of God, remember, remember, and turn yourself from your idols. From those preachers you putting up on pedestals. See, I had some people tell me the same thing. Oh, you know, these people talking about they preach you got to be in nice suits. And, oh, yeah, I, I done heard it. Done heard it. He got to be in a nice car. Done heard it. He got to be in a nice house. Done heard it. Know him. Reverence him on everything, giving him all this money and all that. It's seen it. Turn from your idols and turn away, turn away your faces from all your abominations. You got to remember these things. You got to remember these things. Repent. Remember what those are. But then he said something else we got to do. He said something else we got to do. We got to be baptized. We got to be baptized. And we have to remember our wickedness first in our sinful way. So then once we remember it, we have to be baptized. Repent and be baptized. Repent one and then be baptized two. All right. Just want to make sure we're getting this. Just want to make sure we're getting this. Repent one, remember one, and now we got to be baptized. So we need to know what baptized mean. You have many teachers and tell you Baptized mean this, baptized mean that. But you're being baptized to a church. And that same church will condemn you under its laws and its understanding on what they want you to see. But they'll say it's bringing you automatically to the translated name of Jesus Christ. That's a lie. That's not the truth. It cannot be so far from the truth, it's, it's unreal. But Baptize is the same thing as what you remember in. And you got to remember it's being translated from Hebrew, from Paleo Hebrew, is why I continually tell people when you go get these commentaries, when you go get those Septuagint, when you go get those um, uh, uh, Exalted Bible Dictionary, Exalted Strong's, well, you guys know what I'm talking about. When you go get those those uh, exhaustive books from with those Jewish people who have written, you can say what you want, but it's in your teachings. It's in your teachings that you're doing. You're teaching in error because baptized mean you're condemning. So you have to remember, and then you have to condemn the works of flesh. Baptize. You have to condemn the works of your body. So the works of flesh you have to do. So then you're presenting your body as a living sacrifice for slaughter to God. That's what you have to do. Yeah, see, let's let's go here. Let's let's get an understanding there. Go cool. now we got we got one part down. We gotta 
Let's look at Isaiah. We're going to look at Isaiah. We're going to go to 53. And we got to remember this. In Isaiah 53, picking up at verse 7, it says, He was oppressed and was afflicted, and he was afflicted. flesh but watch this you this is what you have to offer up for sacrifice you have to offer this body up for sacrifice and that's what's going to happen yet he opened not his mouth he is brought comparing as a lamb that's what you have to be that's why he says feed my sheep feed my lamb because you have to be compared as that brought to the slaughter you have to kill this works of the flesh. You have to kill these. You have to be oppressed, afflicted. And when you do that, as a sheep before shears, he is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. Don't, don't sit there and try to give reason why you should stay in flesh. Don't give reason for that. that, that, that that's the worst part. We'll sit there and go through things. And the first thing we want to do is tell people, well, no, I'm doing this for this. I'm doing, well, no, I'm doing this for the Lord. I'm doing this for God. I'm doing it. No, he's telling you. You have to bring those works of the flesh to the slaughter. Let's look at this. Let's look at this. Let's, let's compare. Let's do, let's do something. We have to do something. We have to do something together. We're going to go to John. Let's go to John chapter 1. We're going to look at John chapter 1. We're going to pick it up at verse 29. It says, The next day John seeth Yahawashai coming unto him and said, Remember the Lamb of God. So we know he's going to be oppressed and afflicted. Are you following me? He's going to be oppressed and afflicted. Smitten of God. If you go read verse 50, if you go read chapter 53, it's going to tell you all that. Smitten of God, he's going to be. And God which taketh away the sin. It don't say sins, sin. You got one body that does this you need to do multiple things but you only got one body to commit sin that body can do many acts let's look at some of these acts that flesh can do just just go back to some memory memory lane let's just go back to memory lane for a minute Galatians chapter 5 and picking it up at um verse 19 it says now the works of the flesh are manifest are made known which are these adultery fornication uncleanness lasciviousness idolatry witchcraft hatred all these things are done so if all these things is, is done that flesh has to be sacrificed it has to be slaughtered it has to get we have to get rid of it so it has to be baptized. So those things has to be condemned. So we have to remember what flesh does over here in 19, but we have to remember those, repent. And that's why they had to even the problem with John. That's why they even had the problem with John. See, because they was looking at John because John was condemning people in the wilderness. See, let's, let's, let's look at it. Let's go back up. Let's go up to verse 24. Let's go up to verse 24. It says, And they which were sent were of the Pharisees. They were of the Pharisees. They sent these men to go talk to John because John was condemning people in the river, water, as a symbol of knowledge. 
in the symbol of confessing. So they wanted to know a question. They, they had a question to John. They wanted to know, well, John, why, why are you doing this? Watch, watch what they say here. Watch what they say here. They, they, they real peculiar because they asked him all kind of questions. He says, they said this, they says, and they asked him and said unto him, why baptize thou then? You out here doing this. Why? So why are you out here condemning people? It's a fair question. They want because baptized don't mean nothing but condemning. But they'll tell you baptized is everything else but what it actually is. You should have many churches around here called Baptist, Baptist, Baptist. And if these people in this Bible that you see that's written who people who was actually part of these these writings uh, come in even a day and they will probably fall over. Where they see places got Christian and Baptist all over the place. They'll probably fall over. But they want to know, why are you condemning thou then? And then they said, and this is the reason why. Watch. If thou be not that, if you not be that Christ, nor liars, neither that prophet. If you none of these, why are you doing this? Not baptizing them or saying you bring them into something. No. Why are you out there condemning people? And you not and you not them. Because they the ones gonna Rebuke and all these things. That's what they're going to do. You're not that Christ, that anointed one. And John told him he was here to do something. We need to remember things. Let's look at some of this. Let's look at some of this. And we got, we got to see something. And we're going to go over here to Ecclesiasticus. I think I got that spelled right. Nope, don't have it spelled right. I thought it. Yeah, I me... think that. Yeah, okay. We're going to go to Ecclesiasticus or Sirach, chapter 18. We're going to go to verse 19 to find out something. We're going to 19. It says, Learn before thou speak and use. Pi sick, or ever thou be sick. We need to unlock. Let me explain something because I know we might have a problem here. So I'm going to unlock that to where we can unlock that. But the main thing is this this is another problem we have. We need to learn before we speak. But many people are going to always speak and don't learn. Same thing what we say, same thing we come over here. We tell people, don't come over here with a Christian doctrine and then you try to inject the Christian doctrine into what we teach it because we're going to rebuke it every time. We'll rebuke it every time. But it's telling you about Pisces. Why? Because that word is, I think it's in, I forgot how many times, I believe it's in there two or three times. But that word actually in Hebrew, but they have it here that's written in Greek. That don't mean nothing but natural causes used for healing the body when someone is sick. That's all they're saying. It's telling you and use natural causes or, or ever thou be sick. That's all they're saying. That's all it's really saying. But he's telling you this to, to why could he's telling you this right up front. He says, before judgment, examine thyself in the day of visitation. Thou shall find mercy. So under before your doctrines and teachings. Examine thyself. Examine thyself. For you to receive mercy. Why is he saying this? It says, humble thyself before thou be sick. In the times of sin, show repentance. He's clear about what he's saying. He's clear about what he's saying. 
So we have to first understand and remember things. But the biggest problem we have, the biggest problem we have, we love to sit there and always judge someone else and not get that big old huge boulder out of our own eyes. We know everything. We know everything. And not won't get that boulder out of our own eyes. So we have to understand what, what's going on here. In Luke chapter 6, and picking it up at verse 42, Luke 6 and 42, it says this, and he makes this clear. In 642, it's a kind of a long verse, but it says, Either how canst can't thou say to thy brother, Let me pull out the moat out of that is in thy, when thyself, when thou thyself beholdest not the being that is in thy own eye. We're good for doing this. We're good for doing this. And that's what John came to do. Before you try to take something out of somebody else's eye, John was telling you, you need to condemn what you're doing in your own sight. That's what John was doing. And he, and he holds it at this. He says, thou hypocrite. You're a hypocrite. Cast out first the beam out of thy own eye, then thou shalt see clearly and pull out the mold out of thy brother's eye. That's why I say you got a lot of people, a lot of people in camps and stuff like that. You got brothers on the corners that sit there and, and as soon as you walk by, they quick to call themselves to pull a moat out of your eye that you got on pants. They're quick to pull a moat out of your eye that you, that you didn't shave something, everything. And you look at them and same thing, this, this, this summer coming up, you're going to see them in short sleeve shirts. And I'm not talking about it. It's not a problem with short sleeve shirts, but they got tattoos. They got tattoos all over. So before they take that moat out of your eye, which women wearing pants is not a moat in their eye because they clearly can wear them. But the thing is, any woman that they tell that to say, well, I'll tell you what, before I tell you what, I stop wearing pants just to stop wearing them. When are you going to get them tattoos taken off? Because you can have those tattoos taken off. So before you get that moat out of my eye that you think I have, I want you to get that beam off of your arms. I want you to get those beam off your legs. That's what you're holding for because that's hypocritical. So that's why it says what was going on. So now when we look at this and we go over here to Mark, we're going to look at Mark and um, Mark chapter one. We're going to pick it up at verse one. It says in the beginning of the gospel of Yahweh Shai, the anointed one, the servant of God, the servant of God. And it says, as comparing as is written in the prophets, Remember, remember, I will send my messenger before thy face. Who? John. You're going to send a messenger. And what is John going to do? Which shall prepare thy way before thee. He's going to make you condemn these works of the flesh. That's what he's doing. He's going to prepare the way. And that's why he says, the voice of one crying in the wilderness Prepare the way of the Lord and make his path straight. So that's why I said, so John did what? John did baptize. He did condemn in the wilderness and preach the condemning of remembrance for the remissions of sin. This is clear. So John Condemned for the sinful works in the week of, in in the wilderness, including the preaching, the doctrine of being condemned for repentance. 
You got to remember. So something we have to do in remission, in remission, know something we need to make sure we understand. These are things that people, you know, I don't know why they, well, I'll leave that alone. Remission. Why we need to remission is putting something to rest. It's putting something to rest. So it's in this case, it's sin. Actually, I'm going to tell you what, let's look at an example. Let's do an example of this, the way we just can get what it's saying. It's easier to do it that way because we need to put things to rest. Many times. In Hebrews, it tells us this. In Hebrews, it tells us this. Hebrews, picking it up at chapter 9, and we're going to look at verse 22 to go down. It says here, it says, In almost all things, all things are by the law purged with blood, with life, and without shedding of life is no rest you follow that it's no remission so there's it's no remission why because he's going to explain it now it says it was for that reason necessary that the patterns of things in heaven should be purified with thee with these but the heavenly things themselves which better sacrifices than these We have to condemn these things. We have to condemn the works of the flesh. Actually, we're going to tell you what. We got one good one we can actually run. Just thinking about it. We're going to run over here and get it. We're going to go to Job. We're going to go to Job. We're going to go to old self-righteous Job. We're going to look at Job chapter 9, picking it up at verse 20. And he says, if I justify myself, that's why I wanted that. That's why I wanted this verse. That's why, I, if I justify myself, I want you to think about this. If you justify yourself, if you justify yourself, I want you to think about that. If you justify yourself, my own mouth shall condemn me. My own mouth shall condemn me. If I say I am perfect, it shall also prove me perverse. I had some people in a church tell me they never sinned. Out their own mouths. Preacher included. They never sinned. So that's why John did what he did. Let's let's see. Let's see why this happens this way. So when we look at this and we, we go through this, Mark chapter 1, and picking up at verse 4. This is why John did this. That's why John John did condemn in the wilderness. He was condemning people in the wilderness. But then he preached the condemning of repentance. He, he so he needed you repented. He needed you to remember these things what repent is for the putting to rest of sin to where you can don't have to be in the sin business anymore. So John Remember, John condemned in the wilderness, preached the condemning of repentance, which is remembrance, to put to rest the remissions for sin. So you see this here, and we look at that, and we, we, we understand a lot more on now why it says what it says. We can understand a lot more. So when we go to this verse, in Matthew chapter 28, and we're going to pick it up at verse 19. At verse 19. 
the scriptures from Christ says this. It says, for that reason, which I'm putting there, so go ye for that reason and teach all nations. We don't define nations because we know what it's talking about. But we but I'm gonna show you to you anyway. And it says condemning them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And we need to know what that Holy Ghost is. But he says this in one thing with Uncle Idris. Just to make sure we we clear here. In Uncle Idris chapter 14, he makes some things clear here. He makes sure we, we all understand where he's coming from. This is this. Idris, Edris, same person. It says, for the world is divided into 12 parts and the 10th part is gone already and a half of a 10th part. Meaning the same thing what he's talking about with the other people. So when he's saying that, we have to sit there and understand that when we look at this, when we go to Isaiah chapter 40, picking it up at verse 17, because his concentration is his people, which he's focused on. So when he says this, he's very front upfront about what he's mean. He says, all nations before him are as nothing and they are counted to him less than nothing in vanity because of the things that they do. Because the things that they do. But it goes on more. So when people would love to sit there and they love to use scripture and try to sit there and they love to go to John 3.16 and all you got to do is go to John 17 verse 9 and you'll see it's no contradiction in the Bible but they're confused about what it said because he says I pray for them I pray not for the world but for them that thou hast given me for they are thine. So he's not even praying for all Israel. They are of Israel, but they're not all Israel. So you just need to keep that and remember. So we need to remember those things as we move forward. But we got to understand what this Holy Ghost as we're going to get into it. Because Peter said, Peter, the same thing you're going to see is pinned over here with Acts. As we get ready to see what this is talking about. In Acts chapter 2, in verse 38. We got to get down to 38 and it says this, Peter said these same things. He said, repent, same thing, and be baptized. Every one of you, every one of you in the name of Yahweh Shai or salvation, the anointed one. For the remission to put the rest, the works of the flesh of sin. Then he says, and ye shall, then this must happen. Receive the, the gift of the Holy Ghost. Then that's going to happen. So we got to see how that's going to happen. We got to see how that is going to happen. It's clear on what's going to happen. So Peter was saying that clearly what he was referencing. Knowing what was happening. Because Peter clearly knew what was going on. For the remissions of sin. And then we can receive the Holy Ghost. Because Christ told him something. Christ talked to him. Before before Christ left, he, 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 went, he told him something. We're going to see that and we're going to see it. We're going to go to John chapter 1. We're going to 21. We're going to pick it up at verse um, verse 17. We're going to sit right here and we're going to see what he said because he's talking to Peter. He said, and he said unto him a third time. So you see, he didn't talk to him a few times about the same identical topic all within a couple of minutes. He says, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? And people say Peter felt sorry that's not Peter didn't feel sorry Peter was angry he, Peter was grieved he was angry but people will tell you and they'll go run to 
other people dictionaries and get other understanding. But this angered Peter because he because he asked him three times because he said unto him the third time, lovest thou me? Now, if he had told you, it's the same thing like I done took and told you two times. I love you. And now you're going to ask me a third time. Pretty much what's happened. And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. So, Yahweh Shai said to him, Feed my sheep. And Peter knew this. Peter knew this. So Peter penned some stuff, even some stuff that he wrote. So we want to look at this. We're going to go to 1 Peter, picking it up at chapter 5. So I'll start parking right there at verse 2. And Peter said this because Peter remembered it and, and he knew the Lord that made him mad. <laughs> he made him mad. So Peter, he, Peter know it. So he said that he said, and Peter saying that he says, feed the flock of God, which is among, which is among you. This is Peter. Tell me right up front. Do you do this? He says, take an oversight, take an oversight. There are uh, not by constraint, but willingly. And Peter telling you this, not for filthy lucre, but how many people you see who pops up on the Sabbath day in on the Sunday and they got donation buttons and everything else all over the place to help them move the gospel forward. How many people do that? That's telling you that's not a God. They don't have nothing to do with God. They, that has to do with their ministry, their doctrine that they trying to push the doctrine they trying to get all over the world. They can flip it, strip it any kind of way they want to. But the first thing Peter even said over there, he said, you have to repent and be baptized. You got to condemn. Then you can receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So, and you got to baptize them in the name of the Father, the Creator, the Son, the Servant, Christ, and you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So what is the Holy Ghost? Exactly. That's why most of us are here. That's why most of us want to understand what it is. And most of us need to be able to effectively know what is going on to where we can move forward as we study. The Holy Ghost, what is it? If it's not Christ, the Spirit, then what is it? Because it's not. That's what most people think it is. See, and that's why a lot of times when people teach, they don't properly go through and do their proper studies. So we got to properly go through the scriptures to understand what is what and what is not. So we're going to look at this and we're going to find out what exactly is the Holy Ghost. What exactly is the Holy Ghost? And I promise you this, you don't see it in no commentary, but I guarantee you 5, 10, 15 years later, I guarantee you it's going to start popping up with that, what I told you. The problem is most people don't know what it means. The problem is since they don't know what it means, they're telling you, you got paleo Hebrew dictionaries all over the place. From $4 to $9 to 15 to 20 to $30. And it don't mean what they say they mean. And then people get upset when they see precept mastery. Paleo Hebrew keyword dictionary is what it is. But the problem is we have other nations in one particular nation. I'm talking about keep backlogged with Lulu as well as myself. So this is the thing in that book. Everybody know the book is not, you know, a really economical far as price book because it's going to cost you about $250 but it has the key words in there to make sure you know what stuff mean how they function on what Paleo Hebrew is and <clears throat> the thing is this everything is set up a certain way everything is set up a certain way so we need to see this so we're going to go over here to Luke 
And we're going to find out what this Holy Ghost is. And we got to look at this in the same thing and what we're doing. We're going to go to Luke chapter 8. And we're going to pick it up at verse 11. And it tells you this in Christ is speaking. He says, now the parable is this. And, we, and, and if you guys have time, make sure you get your pens to where you, I want you to write these down because nothing changes in the Bible. <clears throat> Everything this pen is solid. So I want you to write them down. So the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. I need you to just really repin this. If you haven't pinned it before, you pin this. The seed is the word of God. The seed is the word of God. And see, and that's the main thing that came down. We're going to have to check. We want to we just make sure we, we clearly get what's happening. We're going to go to Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 18, verse 15, just to make sure what we're doing. It says, Thy almighty word leap down from heaven out of thy royal throne as comparing as a fierce man of war in the midst of the land of destruction. So we know the seed is the word of God. It's not flesh. It's not a man. It's the word of God. It's the word of God. Keep that in mind. Because if not, this is what this is where the crafty ones will lose you. But we're going to see everything in scripture on what we're going through. So we have to understand what he's saying here. So if the word is going to come in there, we need to make sure something's going to happen. And this is why Paul helps us out here. Let's look at this. Hebrews chapter um, 10. We're going to pick it up at verse 5. And we're going to walk through this. People people who know me, they know I'm going to walk you through it because I want to make sure you get it. So people who want to say, oh, I just need to know what it is, then guess what? <laughs> Tough luck. But this is what we know, want to know. It says, wherefore... Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he says, sacrifice or offering, thou wouldest not, but a body. So he needs a body to put the seed in. Keep that. He need a, he need a plot of dirt to put the seed in. So we're going to walk through this. Because we know the seed is the word of God. But he said, I need a piece of dirt to put it in. Just keep, keep it that way. I know some people sitting there, yo, John, why you got to say it like that? You just say it, just, 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 I don't know, just ghetto. Okay, I'll take that. <clears throat> but the main thing is he just need a plot of dirt. So the same <clears throat> way you can see this here. The same way you can see this here because he can't put it in unclean dirt. Think, keep that in mind. He can't put his word in unclean dirt. This is why he even said this to Moses. Go to Moses, go to Exodus chapter 3. We're going to pick it up at verse 5. Watch, watch, watch what he says here. And he said, draw not hither. Don't, don't, don't get too close. Put off thy shoes from off thy feet. For this place whereon thou standest is holy ground. That's holy ground. And if you got to be holy, be ye holy. So you can't put nothing in this dirt unholy. So we got to see what's going on. We got to repent, be baptized to where we can receive the Holy Ghost. So we're just walking through this. So meaning that was a heavily piece of plotted dirt that was prepared for God. The same as our bodies need to be prepared the same way. A plot of dirt, but different. So I want you to keep that in mind. Keep it in mind. Because we're going to walk through it. I promise you we're going to walk through it. So let's look at this and we're going to look at 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians. And we're going to see something here. Because this is to give you a, a better understanding on what we're doing. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, picking it up at verse 40, picking up at verse 40, let me unhighlight that to where we can focus just on this. It says, there are also celestial bodies. Celestial bodies. 
So to, to make it uncomplicated for us, we want to sit there and say, just put celestial bodies, that's a heavenly body. So what we're going to do, we're going to say that's a Holy Ghost body. So just put that there. I just want you to put that there. That's not what that actually says, celestial. But I want you to put it there because you're going to get the understanding that way. So I want you to see how this is going through there. So there are also heavenly bodies of the Holy Ghost and bodies terrestrial, which is earthly bodies. That's what he's saying. That's what that's what Paul is saying in its entirety. So Paul is breaking it down and I'm just trying to re chew it up and, and, and regurgitate it another way to help you get it a little bit better. So the celestial bodies is the body of the Holy Ghost and the, the, the body terrestrial is the body of the earth. Just keep that in mind. So we're going to look at this. It says, but the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of terrestrial is another. So it's both different. They're both different. But if you have a heavenly body, if you have a heavenly body, you're actually going to be different in what you're doing. You're actually going to be different in what you're doing. Why? Because now you are a child of the resurrection and you can't die anymore. Let's, let's, let's look at something. We're going to look at something. We're going to put all this together in one second. We're going to put all of it together for one second. If you didn't get it already, you're going to put it all together in a second. We're going to go to Luke chapter 20. We're going to look at it verse 36. And we'll see, see right here where he says this here. It says, neither can they die anymore for they are equal unto angels and are children of God being the children of the resurrection. If you receive the Holy Ghost, you are a child of the resurrection. But you can still have a problem with that alone. Because if you reject it, once you have received the gift of the Holy Ghost, and you blaspheme it, you're destined to hell. I don't care what you do at this point. What you do at that point? So we got to remember <clears throat> what it is. So it is not trying to marry to another spirit. Because that's why he's saying. That's why he says this even up here. But they which shall be accounted worthily to obtain that world, that world, that's how you can attain it. In that world, in the resurrection from the dead, neither married nor given in marriage. Because that's because that wasn't the point, because you're married to Christ. So that's why he's saying these. But let's look at something. We want to look at this and we're going to walk through it. We're going to go to Mark chapter 4. We're going to pick this up at verse 30. Mark 4 and 30 is very interesting. And he said <clears throat> this to where we're going to look at how we're going to understand it. We're going to look at this to where we can understand it. It says, where into shall we liken the kingdom of God? How can we, how can we get an understanding on this? We got to put physical things from earthly things. We got to sit there and do this. We got to sit there and do it in that way. That's why we we take care of this in that in that manner. So, how can we sit there and see this to understand what 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 has actually happened? Look at it in this way. It's a or what comparison shall we compare it? So how can we compare it? So he's going to show you a physical thing to where he can give you a earthly thing. Let's look at this. Let's look at this all together. We're going to go down to verse 31 to understand what, what he's doing. We're going to look at 31 where we see it. It says, it's like in a grain of a mustard seed which when it is sown in the earth. So 
He's comparing the same in a spiritual body with a seed, with an earthly body, with a mustard seed. This is what he's doing. It says it's sown in the earth in less than all the seeds that that is in the earth. So this is why he's saying these bodies are different. These bodies are different. So we got to remember that. So the same thing is, let's, let's keep part of this there. Let's keep part of this here. And um, where we can understand some of it. We want to understand some of it. We're going to go to Matthew chapter 13. And we're going to go to verse 4. And we'll see what's happening there. It says, and when he sowed some seeds, some of the word of God, that's why you got to keep it. Some of the word of God fell by the side, by the wayside. So some of the word, it fell by the wayside and the fowls came and devoured it up, devoured them up. So keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. In some, in some, fell on stony places where there was no not much earth. And forthwith they sprung up because they had no deepness in earth. They had no deepness in earth. So what that means? So these mustard seeds, the same thing that you look at it physically. If a mustard seed is in in the earth, but if it fell by the wayside, the the fowls of, of the air are going to gobble them up. And if it don't have much, if it fell upon stony places, when they sprang up because they had no deepness in the earth, what happened? What will happen? Because the ground is too hard, meaning the heart is too hardened. So it's not going to receive nothing because it has no depthness in it. So when the light comes, it'll scorch it. It'll scorch it. It tells you this right here. It says, and when the sun was up, so when light hit it, it consumed them. They were scorched. It consumed you with the brightness of his coming because they had no root and they withered away. On that alone. Why? Because you're in a terrestrial body with the word, but you're in a physical body. I want you to understand what's going on. So now you, it's almost like a child have a gun and playing with it. Same thing like I say with adults having the book of Paul. They got a gun and they still in flesh. You shouldn't do it. So some fell among that and they don't have no deepness at all. Of the earth. And when the sun came up, when the light hit them, it was burned up. It was scorched. It was scorched. I want to actually I want to show you something. I want to show you something just to make sure we can hone in on something. I want to sit there and see. And we're going to go to Mark chapter 10. And we're going to pick it up at verse 25. <clears throat> I want you to think about this. Because they have no depthness in them. He said, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God. Many people think that's a crazy statement that's being said by Yahweh, but it's not. Because you don't have no depthness, it's easier for him to do that. You can put many people in those positions. It's easier 
for me to say personally, it's easy for me to ride a bike and make wings and fly. I'm telling you right now. It's easier for me to ride a bike with wings that fly. The craziness on what he's saying here. Then buying a plane ticket where I can take it where I need to go. That's what he's saying. Plain as day. The first part is crazy. The second part makes all the sense in the world because it's telling you for a rich man, you see a lot of rich men, then they enter into the kingdom of heaven. The first part don't make no sense, do it? It's easy for a camel to go through the eye of a needle, which you know is crazy. That's why he said it that way. That's why I even said what I said. Easy for me to just get a bike, and put some wings on it, and I'm going to fly. Then buying a ticket for a plane and go where I need to go. Having the word of God with a terrestrial body is what that's saying. Technically what that's saying. And you look at this and we go down a little bit more. It says, and some fell among thorns. And when they sprung up and choked them, these sprung up and got choked. So we keep this in mind as we look. We keep this in mind as we look. And it tells you this. And it tells you this. It says, draw not hither, put off thy shoes. And really, most people don't know what shoes actually mean in Paleo Hebrew. And actually, I'm be teaching somewhat on that later but we need to know what actually shoes mean why shoes actually is in the bible why it's actually in there from all that be in the place where thy standeth is holy ground so moses had to get the seed from where he standed so as i said so even with last week, what God will do. And when you look at these things, you sit there and you understand them from that point out. So when you go to Mark 4 and 30, let me get this 4 and 30. Well, 431, we're really what the one we I think we want. 431, it says, it says that same thing. That we see over there, which we just running in two places. And we got it right here. And we're going to be switching this one over here. It says, it's like a grain of a mustard seed, which when it is sown in the earth. Less than all seeds that is in the earth. So the same thing that God does. Is what he do. So it's telling you. So when he does this, and it says, "But when that when it is sown and it groweth, it becomes greater than all herbs, and shooteth out great branches, so that the fowls of the air may lodge under the shadow of it." So he's gonna keep overturning this word and keep overturning and keep overturning till he can get one that is going to fall up on good ground. And we still sin what this earth is. So Ezekiel chapter 21 we're going to look at verse 27 and he tell you I will overturn 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 it and it shall be no more till he whose right it is and I will give it to him so it cannot rest the Holy Ghost or the seed cannot rest in 
flesh. It's impossible. That 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 makes no sense. That's why he says that. It makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. You just say, well, I got the seed of God in me. No, 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 no. Just stop the stupidity. Because it says what you got to do first, you got to remember what your sins are. Then you got to condemn the body. So you also, if you condemn the body, you got to mortify the flesh. So you can receive the Holy Ghost. Let's look at something. Let's look at something to where we get that even better another way. Another way we'll get it. So 1 Corinthians chapter 15. In verse 47. In verse 47. It says. The first man. Is of the earth. Earthly. So the first plot of dirt. Is earthly. From the earth. It's earthly. But he says this, the second man is of, is the creator from heaven. The Holy Ghost. The heavenly dirt. Which grow fruit. So the seed is the word of God. And when you grow up with the knowledge and God waters it, as he says. He waters it as he says. He tells you this all the time. So he's watering his his ground. That's what we got to keep in mind. So when he's doing it, we know. Oh, shoot. I put two E's there. So when he's doing it, he's telling you right up front. That's why he tells you this. He says, I will give you pastors according to my heart to my desire, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. This is what these feeders are going to do. They're going to feed you with what he's saying. So as he does this, it's the Holy Ghost is holding the seed. Once you condemn it, well, we'll see. We'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Yeah. We'll get to that. We're serious. But but he's telling you right there, I'm going to give you pastors. In Ephesians chapter 4, picking up in verse 11, he's telling you, and he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and teachers. But you have some. You have some. That is sit there and say they're apostles. You have some say that. And that's part of the problem. Some say that. And he took care of that also. But people don't have a problem with it. See, it says in Revelation chapter 2, verse 2, it says this I know thy works, I know thy labor, and thy patience. And how thou canst bear them which say, which uh, which are evil, and has tried them which say they are apostles. He tried them. He pro- he tested them. And tried them, and they say they are apostles, and are not. Has found them liars. They have found them liars. These people telling you things that is not true in Scripture. This is why he said you got to show precept upon precept. But they want to sit there and tell you everything according to what they need to do to make sure they can get you separated from money. And he says this. He says this as he's talking. He said, the prophet prophesied lies in my name. I sent them not, neither have I, neither have I commanded them, neither spake unto them. They prophesied unto you a false vision and divination in the thing of not and the deceit of their heart. That's what they do. 
But I promise you, a lot of people still going to run right along with them. They still going to run with them. They're going to tell you they need money for this, they need money for that. They need money for this, they need money for that. And I promise you, you still going to sit right there with them. This is why he said he's not feeding you. You just here getting some seed, but later on, you still your destination still will be hell. Why? Because you're more into their their teachings. You're more into their teachings. So it doesn't matter. You just here just just looking at this as a country club. It says, Howbeit in vain do they worship me, teachings for teachings for doctrines and commandments of men. That's what they do. This is what they do. So that's why he said specific things he said, and he meant what he said. And he meant what he said. He said this. I'm going to show you. I want to put it in two places. I'm going to go back to Ephesians. I'm going to go back to Ephesians. I want to show you something. I want to show you something there. To show you something that's really blunt there. We're going to go to Ephesians chapter 11. I mean chapter 4. Verse 11. But then I want to run something else over here. I just got this one. I just want to run this over here. To understand what, what's happening here. And why we have the problem we have. Why many of us have the problem we have. Because over here, as he said, he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, some teachers. He gave you them not to sit there to act and tell you about what you need to be giving him money. He didn't do that. See, and they'll sit there and tell you contrary to this. But he, he sat there he gave it to you for a reason because he's going to tell you this. This 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 is why he gave them. That's why you see me? He said, "Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. For that reason, for that exact reason, hear the word at my mouth, and give them warning from me." Not oh, you guys are all blessed and everybody everybody going to heaven. This no. You give them, you know, you get a but a warning. That's why we teach the way we teach. That's why even I teach the way I teach. He's giving you a warning. And people want to hear smooth things. But he's giving you a warning. And he's giving you the warning why it tells you right over here in verse 12 why he's doing that. For perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry for the edifying the body of Christ that's what he's doing giving you a warning so you can sit there and play the game but you're getting a warning on what he's doing and he tell you that till till what till we all come to the unity of the faith in the knowledge of the son of God the servant of God unto the perfect man unto the measure of stature of the fullness of Christ. Point taken. Point taken. But watch this. Verse 14. It says this. It says that we henceforth from, from now on be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie and wait to deceive. You ain't caught no more up into this stuff. You ain't caught no more up into this stuff. See, but people will sit there, because I had some sit there and talk about, same thing with me, just on the side note. We had some of them sit there and talk about, you know, hey, well, he, he over there running, got this place called Precept Mastery. Okay, yeah, Precept Mastery. You remember what precepts are. But evidently, you didn't understand clearly what when I say mastery. 
See, knowing precepts and having the mastery of your house is key. This, this, actually, let me show you this, just to, because I do have, I had some people bring that up, but we were just, I just want to straighten something out, thinking about it. And I want to, I want to just bring this out real quick, just to, just to make sure we real clear on this. In First Corinthians chapter nine, we're gonna to go to verse twenty-four, just to make sure we're clear. It says, "Know ye not <clears throat> that ye that that they which run a race run all, but receiveth the prize." So run that you may obtain. That's that's the key. Run that you may obtain the prize. That's the point of precept mastery. Mastering what you need to do. Verse 25 clears it. It says, In every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. That's the problem. But watch this. Now they do it to obtain corruptible crown. But we are uncorruptible. That's the point of precept mastery. Enough said. It's the reason I run the way I run it. So we need to understand what's going on. Why is being ran in that way? Why we have that point on what we're doing? Because if you run in your body in the way you need to do, you sit there and you can understand point blank where, where 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 God is coming from all the time. So when you get over here to verse twenty, you see this says this here. It says, "But ye have not learned so so learn Christ," because that's the problem. We need to be taught of Christ. So you need to be given a warning from him. Meaning this in verse 21. If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as comparing the truth is in salvation. The truth is in Yahweh, it's in salvation. He's clear on this. Verse 22. Put off so that ye put off concerning which formal conversation the old man, that flesh, on what Paul was showing you. His flesh. Put that off. Which is corrupt according to deceitful lust. That's why you're making this clear. But we have to put on this other one. So we have to first repent, repent, remember the sins that we have committed to where we can condemn them in flesh. To where we can receive that other body and be renewed in spirit and of your mind. It's clear. This is clear. So one thing people got to remember is this. Satan himself also does the same thing. Let's watch, let's watch this. Let's watch this. Matthew chapter 13, picking it up at verse 27. Matthew 13, 27. And it says this right here. This is so clear. It says, so the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, do if thou not sow good seed in thy field from whence thou have tares? See, as I said, you got one who's going to receive a spiritual body, the Holy Ghost, and you got other ones who got the word and they still got it in the earthly body. Now, I hope you guys are following this. I'm hoping you're following this and you get what, what's going on here. So cause we got a lot of people who are going to hold on to what is being said. What is being said? Because some people are going to receive the word and still in the flesh. And some people are going to receive the word in the, uh, the Holy Ghost. You got two different plots of dirt. 
got spiritual dirt. You got dirt, dirt. So the same thing is telling you. So the servant said the same thing because Satan also sows seed. You got to remember, he sows seeds. He sows seeds itself. So watch this. Do it thou not, do it not thou sow a good seed in the field from whence thou hast tares? I want you to pay attention to what he's getting ready to say. Verse 28 going to make it clear. He said, he said unto them, an enemy have done this. The servant said unto him, will thou then go gather them up? No. Yeah, you see, he replied. Nay, no. At least while ye gather them up, gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Don't, don't worry about it. Because if you get them up now, you're gonna take up some. You're gonna take up some some wheat. You're gonna take up some good stuff. So he said this, and he made this clear. He made this clear. He said, "Let them both grow together. Let them both grow together until the harvest." So you just see, because when the harvest, see, we got we got to take it up then. But he said, "Until the harvest, and in the time of the harvest." Will I say to the reapers, gather ye first all the tares, bind them in bundles to the barn, and in, in, uh, in bundles and burn them. You go burn them now, cause we 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 good now. But gather the wheat into my barn. Cause you got a lot of people faking. So how do we know when you have evidence of the Holy Ghost? That's the point of the focus as we close it. So we're going to see there and we're going to see this here. This is why you've seen that video at the beginning. We're going to go to Acts chapter 19 in verse 2. In verse 2, he said unto them, Have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? That's the key. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? See, many people will sit there and tell you all things different, but have you received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? And watch what they say. They say something really, really, you know, but you got people who say they receive and the first thing they start doing, they're doing all this crazy stuff. Since you believe, then you go crazy. However, what did they say? What did they say? They said unto him, we have not so much heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. They gotta change that body. See, they, 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 they was condemned in the flesh. They condemned themselves in the flesh. Watch this. He, he, they, they even ask him. He said unto them, unto what then were you condemned? Who were you, you condemned? They said unto John's condemning. They were condemned unto John's condemning. That's interesting, isn't it? But you see there, if you condemned under John's condemning, we want to look at a couple of things. We've got to go back to Ecclesiasticus 39 and pick it up at verse 3. See, this is what you're looking for. He will seek out secrets in the grave, sentences and be conversed in dark parables. In dark parables. Because that's what he's saying. These, everything's in a parable. 
And he goes on more. He says, and ye serve among great men and appear before princes. He will travel through strange countries for he hath tried the good and the evil among men. He's pretty clear right here. He's pretty clear right here. So we need to understand what this is all talking about. So what he's saying here, let's look over here at verse five. See, when they heard what this what, what this this baptism was and in, in, in this Holy Ghost, they heard this and they were condemned in the name of created salvation. Yeah, they were condemned under the word, under Christ. And what did they do? And Paul had laid hands upon them, and the Holy Ghost came upon them, and they speak tongues and prophesied. So this is one of the problems that people talk about. They oh blah blah blah, and they gonna prophesy? No. But the main thing is this. The main thing is this. When you sit there and you get you get the Holy Ghost. Yeah. When you get the Holy Ghost, oh wait a minute. That's the problem that people have. We're gonna go there to verse 14. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33. This is this is this is the biggest problem. That God is not the author of confusion, but of peace compared in all churches of the saints and all the bodies of the saints that's what that's saying he ain't saying all churches all church buildings saying all bodies of the church all bodies of the saints and he's telling you clearly how he do they gonna he's speaking dark speeches and riddles people tell you they talk Oh, I learned this other, I speak, I'm, I'm, no, 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 no. See, he says this and he made these things clear, which they fool people. They fool people to contrary with things that is true. In Psalm 78 itself tells you, in Psalm 78 verse 1, it says, give ear, O my people, to my law. To what he had to my law, incline thy ears unto my words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. Not no, in a parable. You better think on it and figure out what it is. Incline your ears to this parable. But he goes on more. I will utter dark sentences. I will utter dark sayings of old. That's what he does. But people will sit there and say he does everything contrary. I'm, 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 I'm. No, he's not doing that. He would do this to make it clear. But he can't put it in a fleshly body that's not condemned and mortified. It's impossible because he's not going to do it. And he says this, and he makes this perfectly clear to you. This is why certain people always have a problem when he says certain things. When he says certain things to them. Let's look at one of them and watch the same thing. So this is why Yahweh even had a trouble with them. He had trouble with them. The same thing. John chapter 8. John chapter 8. And uh, we're going to look at verse 43. In verse 43, it says this. It says, why you don't understand my speech? Why y'all don't understand me? And I'm, I'm talking plain, but he's talking in the parable. Even because ye cannot hear my words. Y'all don't understand nothing I'm saying. 
Absolutely nothing. So it comes back down to the point of this. If you speaking in parables, in dark sentences, in dark speeches, that's why Paul made this clear with it. Same as Yahweh Shai, they're talking, they don't know what the world is being talking about. So when you see this in in, in in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 23, it says, it says this, because it's going to be in the body of the churches, in the body of the saints, these these people. Meaning what? For if that for that reason the whole church become together into one place and all speak with tongues, parables and dark speeches. People sitting there, like, what in the world? They they don't know. Why? And it says, and there are those that are unlearned, and there come in those that are unlearned or unbelievers. Will they not say they are mad? They said, man, these people, these people in here is crazy. These people is crazy. This is what people are going to tell you. Because it's telling you right up front what he's talking about. Let's look at a little bit more. Let's go to Acts. We're going to go to chapter 2 in verse 12. Actually, we had it over there, but I, I keep it here. Acts 2 and 12, because I'm, and it tells you this. People, when they were doing this, and they were speaking in all these, these, different, these different words and these parables, and they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, what mean of this? It's not saying, what in the world are these people saying? What mean is this? They they understood the words, but they didn't know how the words were being put together. They didn't know what it meant. It wasn't babbling. So when you don't understand what they're talking about, the first thing people do is what? Others mocking, saying, these men are full of new wine. That's why they said that. That's why they said that. But the key to why they said that is this. Because he tells you right up front what he means. So it's not you going to sit there and mock him. Yeah, I wish I made this clear. He made this clear to us. Every time when you're sitting there, you receive something that is of him. He tells you, unto you is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom. Of God, but to others, parables. To others, parables. Not blue blah 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 blah. No, to others, parables, dark speeches and stuff. You know what he's talking? Parables. He's clear. Watch this. They seeing might not see, and hearing might not understand. So it's in a parable. And people think they what? Mocking, drunk, they full of new wine. That's why. So when we see those, that's why he sit there and says it in that fashion. So when we go back over here to Acts chapter 19. Oh, excuse me, I was right there at it. In verse 5, it tells you. When they heard this, they was baptized in the name of creator of salvation. And the Holy Ghost came upon them and they spake in tongues and prophesied. Same thing. So we know now it has to be dealing with this body. So that's why he said you have to condemn the body. You have to condemn it. And we're going to look at Luke chapter 3 and pick it up right here as we close it out. 3.22. It says this. It says, it says this. It says, The Holy Ghost descended in the bodily shape like a dove upon him and a voice from heaven which said, Thou art my beloved servant. In thee I am well pleased. In thee. In that, in that Holy Ghost 
the word is he's well pleased of. His way is clear. This is why he's clear. See, and he did something even to the ground to make sure flesh we shouldn't be worshiping. But we do it. But we do it. Let's do this as we closing. I want to show you something just to make sure we know. In Genesis chapter 3, picking it up at verse 17, he says this. And he says this clearly to Adam. He says, because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and thou hast eaten of the tree, which I commanded thee, saying, thou shalt not eat of it, cursed is the what? Is the ground, flesh, from where we are. For thy sake, for your sakes, he, 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 he cursed it. Letting you know we shouldn't be having no faith in flesh. None. So with that, you remember this. With that, you remember this. Everybody you see doing that and you want to hold on to it, that's up, that's up to you. Because many people are still going, well, I still do this. Okay, then fine. Fine. But guess what? When you when you show up in hell, you know why. In Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 7, it tells you this and why it's saying that. Because he's going to get rid of he's going to get rid of the tares. That's what we're in right now, technically. And it says, then shall the dust return to the earth as it was. It's going to go right back to that natural state. What it is, dirt. And the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. That's the difference. That is the difference on what we need to know. So that hopefully, hopefully, that, that you guys got some understanding that that Holy Ghost is a body for the word to be set in there, for it to grow, for you to have ears to hear and eyes to see. Not for you to sit there and act crazy. Not for you to sit there to act a fool. That's what it's there for. So many of us will continue to look at other things. And we're gonna still sit there and try to hold evidence to some man, some some something, and not to what it actually is. When you need that body, that's why he said, I need a body to where I can put this dirt, this heavenly dirt in there to where I can put my seed in it. Once my seed is in it, I can grow that one with knowledge and understanding. So hopefully you guys got some understanding there. And as well as I have a few people that I know that was in um, Elder Jenkins uh, uh, Bible studies. I believe I know um, Brother Kevin and a few others. You guys are have access to get in there for the book of Jonah that we in the back. And another announcement, I will be um, in about a week. I will be doing another study where we're going to go through the book of Proverbs, but I'm not going through the book of Proverbs for you to, um, just to do it. But what we want to do is we want to find out and to put more things with it, with this focus more on learning. We want to understand what is happening. So I'm going to show you how to take notes and my form is what I say perfect notes, but notes, how to rightfully take notes in the Bible for your learning as well as to teach someone else how to actually take notes. And we're going to go through the entire book of Proverbs, because if you're not doing taking notes, anytime someone quotes something from Proverbs, then that's letting you know you're not properly understanding the word of God and I'm going to show you what books every time that book is mentioned you should have a note there but I'm going to show you how to properly take notes to where you'll never get lost you'll understand the application on what you need to be doing you understand why you need to take the note or if you don't need to take the note 
So that's what I will be doing. And we're going to have that class and we'll be doing that in the back. I'm not going to be doing it in the front. We're going to do it in the back. So with that, I wish that each and every person that um that had joined us. And if you haven't had a chance, please join up. Go over there to uh you can click at the bottom. You can see where you can join the King James Bible University. And another problem we was having with that is where it's not really on our side, but you have to join teams. And with the teams, teams going to give you another type of email, which you log in with in the password. And people haven't been able to do that. But you have to, when you, when you, when you're granted to come in there, you have to make sure you sign in under teams, sign in through teams, but go through and put in that email that you're giving with the with the password to where it's going to force you to change the password to where you can actually access the 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 uh the school so if you don't do that you're going to always come up with some errors so until we can do that we need to make sure some people we try to make sure we can walk through and help them out but we want to make sure that you guys can do this and um as we continue and the same thing is, the one thing I do want to let everybody know, please, tomorrow we will have a special teaching on King James Bible University page, homepage that's over on King James Bible University homepage. And it's it's a it's an Easter special, but it's over there for a reason. And we want to sit there and we have to use Easter Sunday as the bait. So if you want people to get some truth and you have some family members want to get some truth, you make sure you invite them to it because we're going to have it. We're going to set it up on a Christian way because if you got to go fishing, you got to make sure you have the same bait to catch what you want to catch. And we got to use the bait to catch it. So if you want them to be part of it, please make sure that they can join tomorrow. But at Easter Sunday, tomorrow, because we're going to go through there and you're going to get some pretty good tools to be able to help even family members as well as other ones. If you don't, you can have them to come over there and join, but it's not nothing where we're going to be talking at them, but we just want to make sure that they are understanding what is happening. So we're going to, cause we're going to have, we're going to be running three different books. I'm going to be running the, the, the ESV, the NIV, as well as the King James. We're going to get a lot of history, but we're going to get a nice teaching from that to get some understanding about Easter about Easter so hopefully that you guys are able to join us tomorrow for that teaching so until then and I'm going to get ready for this uh, other class so until then I say to each and every person I appreciate you and until the next time Shalom Let me tell you why you're here. You're here because you know something. What you know you can't explain, but you feel it. That there's something wrong. You don't know what it is, but it's there. Like a splinter in your mind, driving you mad. Do you want to know what it is? You can feel it when you go to work. When you pay your taxes, it is the world that has been pulled over your eyes to blind you from the truth. Like everyone else, you were born into bondage, born into a prison that you cannot smell or taste or touch. A prison for your mind. Unfortunately, no one can be told. You have to see it for yourself. This is your 
last chance. After this, there is no turning back. You take the blue pill. The story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want. You take the red pill. You stay in Wonderland. And I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes.